Hi, I'm John Michael Higgins, and you're watching American Gentleman Magazine. Uh, the word gentleman is one that gets thrown around a lot, um, but it's a little like that, uh, that definite, the Supreme Court definition of pornography from the 50s. Uh, they can't define it, but you know it when you see it. And um, uh, to me, uh, you know, the easy answer is uh, gentleman is, you know, what do we ha a person who opens doors for ladies, but he also opens doors for children and for dogs. And um, he opens the door just to see if anyone needs to come through. I think a good definition would be someone who um, gives more to the world than he takes from it. And... I would think that the final test of a gentleman would be um, not how he treated people who could be of service to him, but how he treated people who couldn't. Well, I was an actor when I was a child, and um, I have a great uh, affinity for the theater because I grew up on, on the stage. I, there were times when I wanted to do other things because I, I was a very curious uh, student academically and I almost uh, went into that. But I, I do think that once you're an artist or maybe it's just being an actor, it's very hard to get rid of it. And it didn't, it never, I, I continued to work as, a, as an actor and it never really left me, you know. Um, it's a hard thing to tamp down. Um, I'm not even sure what I can define it. I, I really don't have a huge need to get up and in front of people and jump up and down and make faces anymore, but there is a, a huge part of me that has to express myself by, by um, acting, by telling stories with my body and my voice. And I don't know where it came from. It seems to have been born to me. I have none of that in my family. I come from a Navy family, which also, uh, you know, in our family, uh, being a gentleman was a uh, was an, a very important thing. Um, it was um, it was not a strict or a tough or a mean household, but it was a gentlemanly one. <laughs> My father was an officer in the Navy, and he was um, he came up in a time when that meant something. You know, when a Navy officer walks down the street, he had the best clothes, he had the best bearing, he had the best education, he could do any number of things excellently and uh, including, you know, uh, fight a war. But um, most naval officers didn't spend their time fighting wars. They spent their time as, as men in society. And it was extremely important that they were the best men that they could be. And that certainly was passed down to myself and my brother, one hopes. I think suits are tricky, you know, they're a little bit like uh, um, lovers, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's hardly, it, you can hardly judge them by the way they look, it's how they fit on you, <laughs> and so, um, uh, you know, the fits that seem to work for me right off the rack are uh, Boss and Ted Baker works really well for me, and then there are these odd surprises, you know, they'll find these you know, uh, they, sometimes they use uh, on our show, uh, they'll go downtown or something, they'll find an odd suit that's, you know, any, even a, a vintage suit made by a designer who doesn't exist anymore. And um, they joke it's because they fit me because I'm such an uh, a old-fashioned vintage person, <laughs> but, but maybe I'm, I'm no longer stylish or something. But uh, I like those suits, and Ted Baker fits particularly well. I don't know why. Um, I've, uh, mostly in film and television, I've ended up doing comedy, um, which comes as something of a surprise to me because my whole career before that was mostly in drama and, and um, on stage. And I do miss a lot of that. I miss a lot of the dramatic uh, roles. Um, I was mostly a classical actor, Shakespeare and Shaw and that sort of thing. Shaw particularly, I, there's a couple of plays that I wish I had done. Uh, when I was still able to do a lot of theater. Man and Superman is one. Um, and um, 
I, uh, I, I, do, I do hold out hope that one day maybe I can get back to it, but I, I have a feeling that uh, I may have aged myself out of that particular part, <laughs> but I'll, I'll have to watch somebody else do it. I think that, um, that working um, in any situation is an excellent um, preparation for a long career. I always encourage young actors to just do it. Try, try. I'm, I'm, I mean anything. Folding chair theater in a black box, children's theater, theater in a nursing home. I learned much more doing theater and um, film productions in difficult situations than I learned from doing them in excellent situations. Uh, in in uh, moneyed situations or easy situations, uh, you have a whole army of people who are there to solve your problems for you. Problem solving is the is the crux of a long career. Also, I would say range. Um, I'm a character actor um, because, in a way, it sounds crazy, but thankfully, I'm not good enough looking to be <laughs> to be the leading man. I would already my career would be over already. I'm you know I'm too old, so. I, um, I have a, a very rangy interest in material, and I end up playing a lot of different things as a result. It's tricky on the fame side, but as you were saying, because um, the more things you play, the less famous you get, because people get famous for the thing. It's, oh, it's that guy, you know, he does that. And um, I have never really been that guy and I think that's why I'm still working. <laughs> I choose roles, um, sometimes it's mere circumstance. Um, I, I need the job or I'm tired of, of uh, doing what I'm doing, uh, something else, and I want to change. And, it's, and it could just be often it's just circumstance. Usually though, I'm, thankfully, I'm in a position where I can choose a bit and the material um, has to rhyme with life on Earth. <laughs> it has to remind me of myself in some way. I felt that. I've had that problem. This is the way you deal with a problem like that. It just has the ring of truth to it. And uh, that could be the broadest, craziest comedy or the most searing drama. It doesn't matter. In fact, as an actor, I don't even make the distinction. Comedy and drama is a distinction that, that that's the audience's problem. The acting is always the same. You got a problem as a character, you got an obstacle, you want something, you got an obstacle, you solve it. The audience figures out whether it's funny or not. And that has to do with how the writer set up the, the situation. If you're, you know, if you're, uh, if you, you want to get back with your ex-wife but um, you've lost your clothes, it's a comedy. You know, if you want to get back with your ex-wife and it's uh, you, do, you have your clothes on, it's a drama. So it's just a mere situational thing. The playing is the same. I play it the same way. Um, yeah, I do. I, um, I like a uh, Kettle One Martini on the rocks with a twist. He, my, when, first time my dad said, here, try this, it's a martini. I was, I don't know, I was you know, 18 or something. It's a little like trying coffee when you're eight, you know? It's like you cannot believe that people drink it. And then, you know, you've had your third cup and you can't stop. So um, he handed me a martini and I drank it. And I said, you know, it's like halfway between the best thing I've ever tasted and lighter fluid. So that's a martini. <laughs> Most of the stuff I'm really proud of is was on stage in in New York in my in my theater career. Um, it's not a very satisfying answer because the whole nature of stage is that the people who saw it were the people who were there there, and that is also the magic of theater. It doesn't exist in any other form. It happened between me and those people, and it went away. It's gone now, and you make your peace with that as an actor. I mean, there are photographs, perhaps maybe a surreptitious uh, filming of it, but it's not the same. And um, those achievements um, 
will be with me forever. They they were uh, challenging and they they challenged my very being. Um, some of this just comes with age, but I think um, I have children now too, and it's it's it, a question that often comes up: what is what are, what is the best philosophy by which to live and the stuff that seems to stick is flexibility um, seems to be the most important. Those who are able to be flexible uh, to confront any situation, and there are lots of different ones, and they come rapidly, daily. The flexible person has a, has a smile on his face at the end of the day and the other one doesn't. And a smile on your face at the end of the day, maybe this is the philosophy, makes for a long, happy life, healthy, happy life. So I would say, in a word, flexibility. What's next? I am on a television show, and the, the nature of these is that you have to do them until they say stop. <laughs> you, you're not really allowed to do much else, but in the, in the interim, I do, generally I do films. I have a film out now, Pitch Perfect, which I shot uh, in my last hiatus, and um, um, a couple of, I've got a film called My Uncle Raphael, which is playing, and um, um, I do a number of uh, voiceovers on cartoons and things like that, which are always running. But I basically have to line something up for the next hiatus. And um, the next one I'm doing is an independent film um, about uh, alcoholism. So that, that I'm looking forward to that, too. As I was saying, it might be more, a slightly more dramatic turn for me, which, I, which I'm uh, happy about. But um, I love to work, and I love to do different types of things. And I, I hope that they can uh, keep coming and stay different. I am John Michael Higgins, and I am an American gentleman.